Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And this week, we are doing the best cards from Thunders, or Outlaws of Thunder Junction, slash the Commander set, slash the extra sheet, big score, big news, whatever. Uh, all the cards associated around Thunder Junction. And of course, uh, just so that you know we're talking about Thunder Junction, we're all wearing cowboy hats, or we're wearing one piece hats and pretending we have cowboy hats. Somehow, Seth. both there are more one piece hey. hats than Howdy. there are cowboy hats. Look, look, this is as this is this is as Western Texan as we get out here in California. Okay, this is this is what I got. This is what I got. But Seth, you have an actual cowboy hat. How you I doing, do. partner? Or what's, what's honestly? Up? This is embarrassing, but I actually kind of love this hat now. I think I'm going to unironically wear wear it now. I've never owned a cowboy hat in my life, but now I kind of like it. So I'm doing pretty well. I got a new hat. Crim, uh, uh, Crim D. Ace, uh, the agent of Avenger. What's going on? How, 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 Howdy. Is the, how is the Wild West treating you? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty happy about it, especially since I got the Holy Ones uh, hat. Uh, this one's pretty, pretty pretty fun there's a lot of cards there's a lot of western themed things that i don't normally like but the cards are powerful enough for me to enjoy and i am the cod father richard this is my wife's hat i have a question for you guys <laughs> you know this crease is it supposed to point <laughs> forward to the side like what, what, how do you wear a hat <laughs> I, I don't uh I don't know. <laughs> I honestly I think it don't lines know. up. I think it lines is, up. Is I think it's supposed, supposed to, to line up. Is it supposed to? I line think you up? got it. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> you look. You look great, Richard. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry I, about I'm it. I am literally. I am literally Luffy looking for the One Piece with my straw hat. But I, I believe this is canon. You'll see me in the California desert wearing this. Therefore, it is a Western <laughs> hat. <laughs> so, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. But before we get into that today. Our show is brought to you by Ultimate Guard, premium protection for your trading cards. You know, if you're playing in the Wild West, you don't want to get your cards all dirty and scuffed. You can use Ultimate Guard sleeves on an Ultimate Guard playmat like we do on Commander Clash. So check out UltimateGuard.com. And today's show is also brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Uh, you can skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listings. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with a buy list value of $1 or more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. So, Ultimate Guard comment of the week. Booty sweat. <laughs> The biggest takeaway from this episode is Seth can pull off a cowboy hat, even if it's a bit crooked. It's crooked, Seth. <laughs> which, way, still... which way does the crease I don't, go? I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to wear a cowboy hat. I've never owned one before. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. <laughs> All right. Next next week we're gonna up we're gonna upgrade to the the boots and the spurs. Yeah. We're, oh yeah. God. Oh God. <laughs> Please. Oh no. no. Oh. Nope. Okay. So, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Uh, Tomer could not make it uh, here today, so it's the three of us. We're just going to go through some of the best cards in the set. And uh, this, this set is full of, of some saucy cards, so there, there are a lot of good ones. And, of course, I'm going to kick things off with the most boring card, but the, 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 the meat and potatoes that is, like, so broken you should play it. And it's a bounce land. <laughs> Arid Archway. <laughs> Dude, so, there's no it, way. It, it has a typing. It's a desert, which is going to be relevant in a second. But it ETBs tapped. It's a land. Uh, when it enters, return a land you control to its owner's hand. If another desert was returned this way, surveil one, and you can tap it to add two mana. Uh, so this is Guildless Commons with some upside if you have deserts, and it's of a type desert. I run Guildless Commons in every single one of my decks. Uh, so having Wait. a second guildless commons every you're running Why? every so like outside of mono white so mono white so board every time but you run it in like three color decks or whatever or is your like mono white decks so all colors so green included so what, once you get to four or five colors I have enough of the uh like the Ravnica bounce lands that I I don't need the guildless but three colors yes. Three colors will Ooh. run three the, the three matching bounce lands plus uh the guildless commons because it's literally it's literally a ETB tapped land 
that draws a card, right? Because you, you're you're bouncing Man. a card back, so it's like you're drawing a land. So it's would you pay one mana to draw a card? Uh, right? I yes. would. And you get the upside of bouncing back your Odawarus, your Andu inversions, your MDFCs. You know, you, you can trigger Mystic Sanctuary again, all that, right? But even even without that, it's literally tap land, draw a card where that card is a land, right? So I, I play these everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> Maybe I uh, not appreciate bounce lands enough. Like I love it in mono white for catch up ramp purposes, but I don't know. I haven't gotten so far where I'm like drawing a land is worth playing a colorless land in like my three color deck. But I, I don't know. What do you what do you think about these lands, Grim? Do you play them? I don't. I don't. I mean, like I I see their synergies with uh, MDFCs and stuff like that. That I do like, but I don't know. Sometimes I I, I just don't feel like these bounce lands are worth it half the time. Like, I play maybe one at best. I feel like Richard's deck is, like, 90% bounce lands. Uh, mm. I, I I feel like oftentimes I draw them early, I have to bounce my land back, and then it's just, like, I didn't really do anything. I just set my tempo off. Uh, I haven't really enjoyed it all that much. Just kind of low on them. So, so Richard, I got a question for you. How much does being a desert actually matter? Is this just guildless commons, like, 99% of the time? Or are you trying to get some upside out of the desert type on there? Okay, so <laughs> there's two upside cards. One we're going to talk about in a second. The the Well, actually, there's three. So Scavenger Grounds, you can sack a mm -hmm. desert, right? So normally you just sack itself, but now you can actually get like two activations of Scavenger Grounds if you want. And Hour of Promise, that's the five mana green ramp uh, two lands out of your deck, any lands. And if you control, I believe, two deserts, you get... You get some number of zombies. zombies. You can tell I've two, never two act zombies, activated. Yeah, this you get two, two zombies. Yeah, <laughs> but now we have what? enough deserts that this is actually plausible <laughs> to do, right? Like the 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 dream plays our promise. Grab two deserts, get two zombies, bounce back in MDFC, have interaction. Like you can you can do that. Uh, so desert has a meaningful upside now. Does this change your ranking of like uh, they printed a card called Map the Frontier? It's just a uh, explosive vegetation, four mana, search for two basics or deserts. Put them in the battlefield tapped. Like, do you play cards like Map the Frontier or there's like Chef It Monitor? You can cycle it for four mana, and when you do, you grab a desert or a basic and put it on the battlefield. Like, are we playing these cards to try to find this, or is that going too deep to find this <laughs> this bounce nah, land? I, I I just pay one more mana for our <laughs> promise and yeah, get whatever I right. want because you you might not always want the bounce land, right? You might actually want some some other lands. Uh, so I I just pay one more mana. <laughs> There, there is another upside though, which is actually the first card I wanted to talk about, which works really well with your first card. Uh, I actually kind of cheated. There's two new catch up ramp cards in this set that I think are really good. One of them's just a claim jumper, three minute three three with vigilance. When it enters a battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you get to search for a planes put it on the battlefield tapped. And then if an opponent still controls more lands than you, you get to repeat the process. So you can double catch up ramp potentially, and it's not restricted to basic planes. You can get your survey lands or triumphs or whatever the other one is a desert one sand scout a two mana two two human scout when it enters a battlefield if an opponent controls more lands than you you can search your library for a desert card put it in the battlefield tapped and then shuffle and then if land goes into your graveyard from anywhere you get to make a one one token uh, only once per turn so sand scout i think is really really good with these desert lands so i was wondering like okay is it going to be worth it because deserts are a relatively small subset of lands and you probably need at least like like three in your deck to really feel like it's going to be consistent. I guess you could try to cheat and go with two, but I think this new bounce land and then you got scavenger grounds and then there's that cycle of like untapped one color lands like uh, Heshep Oasis and Ifner Dead lands. Even just between that, I think you can squeeze three deserts into your deck and make this into a really good Knight of the White Orchid effect or uh, any of those catch up ram spells. And then I'm curious what you think about Claim Jumper, Richard. Like how good is that? We normally see our catch up ramp at two mana. This is one more mana, but it can potentially double ramp you. Will it turn on often enough? Like, are you actually going to have multiple opponents or one opponent that has so many lands you can trigger it twice? What do you think about the three mana one? It is explosive vegetation. So it depends <laughs> if you want explosive vegetation. So like, like, three, like, like three is a lot more than two. But 
Uh, there's this card that we play. Uh, what what is the name of it? The the one where you sack it, and uh, for each opponent with two or more lands than you, you get to ramp. Surveyor scope, I think. Yeah. Surveyor scope. So so the trick is this, right? The trick is if you only say bounced one land, right, and there's only say one opponent ahead of you, you can skip a land drop on your turn, and the following turn play this to uh, trigger it twice, right? And the reason that's worth it, right? Because you, you ended up mana neutral as if you made the land drop, but you drew an extra card, right? Because you, you got yeah. to keep one of your lands in hand. So this is like draw two, right? So I think this is worth it. It depends, right? Like explosive vegetation is a weird spot on the curve. Like, I don't know if we want that, but this is a draw two. And I think you can get it off reliably by just skipping a land drop if needed. Uh, but for example, if there is a green player, that ramps, and uh, you played a bounce land somewhere in here, then you are probably good to go without even doing any skipping turn shenanigans. So I'm going to give this a shot. I think it's probably pretty good. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's pretty sweet, personally. And oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I like it as a three drop. I think that the upsides are definitely all there, especially as someone who's usually behind on lands anyways. Uh, everybody, <laughs> I, I'm always going to play catch up ramp. I... I the the nice thing again is that I do really like it just says planes card as a as you had mentioned like a knight of the white orchid as opposed to just having to get a basic I can even use this card as opposed to and like you know all the other things where usually it tells me to need basics and I only ever have like two I think it definitely jumps the value of lotus field even more too because you sack two lands so that makes it really easy to like turn on your your catch up uh, double catch up ramp but I think both these cards have potential to be really good and claim jumper three mana three through with vigilance actually not a bad body and like the vigilance is kind of nice if you're playing equipment and stuff you can do a little offense defense get in hit still have a blocker back so I think that like knocks it up just a tiny bit more in value too but I expect we're gonna see both of these cards Richard are you adding deserts to your deck? to play sand scout like it's it's worth yeah, yeah I mean, sand scout is beyond busted right because you play a fetch land uh you you get a you get a sand warrior <laughs> out of it right like you you play lotus field you get a sand warrior out of it so not only is it catch up ramp that i would say is better than knight of the white orchid because knight of the white orchid is double white which could be hard to cast uh loyal warhound is one in a white this is also one in a white so this is one of the best cards and you can grab the bounce land, right? And the bounce land ensures that your catch up ramp keeps working. So, like, this is amazing, right? So, this is one of the, this is probably like the best two mana catch up ramp spell. I mean, it edges up your Togrifer's Hawk. Like, I, it hurts, it hurts me to say, but like, this is the best two mana ramp spell, I think, right? <laughs> It even it, it even might helps. catch up ramp. That is sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it might. Well, it does only get desert, so that is the only awkward part. I do like that. Sometimes you run into the awkward discard to hand size thing with your bounce lands, and with this, you can like get the bounce land desert, bounce something back to your hand, discard extra land to hand size, make a token because it triggers whenever the land goes to you the battlefield. Discard? So it even kind of solves the the like having to discard to hand size issue that you sometimes Yo. run into. You land tax your way up and just chuck all your yeah. lands and make like a bunch of one ones for nothing. Like, wait a minute, how Maybe broken this is this? Better than I thought. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Sand Scout's really good. Wow. Okay, uh, Krim, what do you got for us? Uh, so I think one thing we've all kind of seen from this set are all the spree cards. Uh, one of the, one of the spree cards that I don't think are talked about enough, which I thoroughly enjoy to no one's surprise, is Rush of Dread. One black black. Uh, you can pay an additional one to uh, make it so target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control. Round it up plus two. Target opponent discards half the cards in their hand. Round it up, and then another plus two. Its target opponent loses half their life. Round it up. So it's another like another cruel ultimatum for yours truly. And there's a I I do love. That it says rounded up. Usually these things they do say rounded down, but now that they've they've started to shift in uh, power creep, rounded up is nice. And compare like paired with like my Zevlor deck, which will then make it so target opponent. Uh, that's exactly what we love. It allows us to then target every opponent. And I just think that these effects are good in any black based deck because usually. These effects are nice. You want to get around Ward nowadays. You want to. I, I still love my edicts. I know Richard doesn't, but I love my edicts, and this is one of the edicts that are just getting better. 
I think this card is pretty bad. Okay, so I shouldn't say it's pretty bad. I mean, I do think it's pretty bad. <laughs> I would play it if I have synergies for it. Like, it seems really good. Zevlar, that's a good example. If I'm, like, Turgriding, this seems like a brutal card in Turgrid where you care about discarding and sacking. I don't really know if I would just play this as generic removal, though. Like, I really have the fear that even with it rounding up, aren't you going to get the worst half of your opponent's creatures and the worst half of the cards in their hand? I guess the last mode has lots of combo potentials, so there's, like, several cards where if you make someone lose half their life, they can do the other half, so I like it in that scenario. But what do you think of this in just, like, a generic deck, Grim? Is this good enough if you're just playing, like... I got Black Man in my deck, so I played his removal because I, I haven't been able to get all the way there with this one yet. I think that most of the decks that you play Black, uh, I, I do like it, right? When it comes to Rakdos, most of the play styles and the things that those colors reward you for, Rakdos, Mono Black, I think this is fine in there. I think this is pretty good. I like the, I really like the, the half ultimatum. I know that ultimatum gave me a ton of cards as well. But I just, I absolutely adore these kind of cards. So my bias is definitely on display mm -hmm. here. I'm not going to tell you that, like, put this in any deck with black mana, I guess, like like a five-color black deck. But I do think that every deck I play, this is a strong card. It's a very crimmy the, card. The funniest mode is the last mode, right? Like, so for yeah. five mana, someone loses half their life. Could be 20 damage. Could be 50 damage yeah. if they're a life gain deck. And then you just get someone. But the, the discard hand is just... If you, if you really want to stick it to someone, right? Yeah. Like, like did you remove my creature? See, see ya. Yeah. Take half your hand away. <laughs> and the, the roundup for, for all of these modes. So if they have one creature, four mana kills it as an edict, right? So Since you can round up. But after that, like then they can just choose their best creature. So it gets a little saucy. It, yeah. It'd be better if it said like non-token creatures or something like that. Uh, because there, I mean, there's a lot of but, tokens but, but, sitting but, around. But, but Richard, you could make them also sack half their hand, <laughs> round it up, and their life, round it up. This is just modal, right? Why? Why? Like eight mana? I get the whole thing. Like what, what you that. need is to fork it, right? And then so if you're playing Rakdos and you fork it, you wrath someone's board. Well, you just kill them straight up, I guess. And put you wrath their board and discard their hand while mm. you're. Oh no, it doesn't work. They no, won't actually it, die. It halves and halves. <clears throat> it oh halves no, it doesn't half, work. Yeah, if you copy it. Doesn't it. Work. But there are like so uh Bloodletter Vaclazots does it. What's the big demon creep? Wound reflection is one of them. Wound and there's some eight so minutes. The 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 lose depravity lose or something. Life yeah. yeah. Equal to the amount of life you've lost this turn. Yeah. So those, those are the double up combo with it. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think tell me I can combo and remove things? And interrupt and well, I mean they're dead, so you remove their whole board and their hand. Well, no, no, no. That but remember, <laughs> I, I I get to target different opponents. Oh, right? that's right. Yeah, that's right. You could kill one person and then half the hand of someone else. Annoy the yeah. rest. Yeah, yeah. Would like be it, oh, OP if it just hit each opponent. Like, would that be too yeah. OP, Krim? I, I mean, yeah, I think it probably would be would right. It? Like, do you think like, if for five mana I just halved everybody's life, rounded up, and then potentially yeah. eight mana? I just got everyone's hand, and I like th this is I, I something that true. you can reoccur. I mean, if if you forced easily. it to be eight mana, I think it'd be okay if it hit everyone. But because you can go five mana, half everyone's life, that'd probably be too strong. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's like a sixty damage five mana burn spell or something. <laughs> if everyone's yeah, at forty, it, so I guess that's kind of wild. Yeah, absolutely nuts if that were the case. But yeah, I don't know. I still think this is a powerful card. Its flexibility is why. All right. Uh, Old Tech Matter Weaver. It's a white human artificer at three mana. It's a two four. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Create a one one colorless gnome artifact creature token, or create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. Artifact decks get even better. Uh, <laughs> so a treasure is something people have around quite often. So this gives you kind of the storm killed artisan artist effect where every time you cast a creature you get a refund so you can do that if you have skyclave relic tokens sitting around because you kicked it you can keep making mana rocks every time you cast it uh if you have card structs sitting around uh you probably just win the game by casting a couple creature spells here <laughs> it's a three mana two four at base too and it, it just does luck. so much like at base it makes one one gnomes and then if you have literally anything to combo with, uh, you, you can probably pop off pretty hard. So artifact decks keep getting better. That's all I got to say. 
I mean, the card's really good. The card, yeah, I think this card's really good. And you didn't even consider, like, trying to make a token copy of, like, something more powerful than, like, a treasure or something. So if you really want to go deep on this, there are, like, heat shimmer effects. We got a new one in Thunder Junction, whose name I can't remember, and the big score that is just, like, two mana, make a token copy of an artifact or creature that is an artifact, and then you could use this to copy it. So there's definitely a lot of shenanigans here. Plus, just, like, we've seen Monastery Mentor pop off, uh, you know, other similar cards that make one ones and a lot of decks are playing creatures so yeah i think this is a, a pretty uh pretty solid inclusion that's gonna gonna have a lot of upside e i i i think it's decent i think i you know what you like i, I i'm trying to figure out what deck i would want to play this in right like the every every artifact deck is already busted so i'm not really like impressed by this this is actually pretty weak right is it not I I mean, wouldn't you play in, like, what about, like, humans or something, Krim? What about playing in your human deck? Like, it is a human, and then you can use it to copy or whatever, a treasure from one of your things or so forth, or is make it, one ones. Is that good? I I, <laughs> I don't think this is that great, because, like, the problem is the tokens that it makes aren't even a human. They're a that colorless gnome, right? I don't know if I like that. I do, like, this is definitely more one of those maybe like an artifact aggro, like an affinity style deck, maybe that might be a little more efficient here, but I don't know this. I, we've seen tons of effects like these, right? Third path, iconoclast, things like that. There's lots of things that can reward you for casting th like, you know, things. This one rewards you for casting creature spells, but the l second mode is kind of weird because I don't really see the use of it in a creature deck, unless I'm like, what, maybe copying a coat of arms, that's a, actually it has to be an artifact token. They, they make yeah. a token of it. So you can't even just copy a normal artifact. I don't know. I feel like that second mode's pretty niche. And I'd rather just play a better, more aggressive body. I think I mean, too hard. Just think Lotus deck, okay? You don't need to make token. It's clues, art, uh, clues, treasures, food, right? Sure. Guess what? Food is a, a, a white color, right? So here you right. go, right? So but you have to cast a creature. Yeah, right. But, you, so, but those decks have tons of creatures, right? They're not just strict artifact decks, right? They they then, have things that generate food and generate, you know, investigate, tireless tracker, blah, 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 academy manufacturer. I uh, feel does, like does that work with niche. this, by the way? If you make a token copy of a food or something, does it triple with <laughs> academy manufacturer? Ooh, let me, <clears throat> let me read it. When you cast it, create a token. It should, yeah. I believe it should because you created a token copy. So, yeah, if you copy a food, you'd get a treasure and a clue, too. Dude, I mean, you this, just, this, is, <laughs> this is good in any Academy manufacturer deck. Sure. But that that's like a I don't know if that's a reflection on that card or this. But like, I don't know, like, think of it this way, Graham. If you have a treasure out, isn't every one of your creatures like isn't this like a crazy ramp spell? Because every creature is going to make a treasure that's like netting you one mana. So it's like a static one mana discount. Plus, you could store up the treasures. I think that's what sold me because I was kind of where you when I first read this card. But then when Richard mentioned treasures, that's what I think really sold me on it potentially being powerful because a lot of decks are going to have the ability to make treasures. Even your creature decks have creatures that make treasures. And then just every time you cast a creature, getting another treasure that's not even like tapped or anything seems really strong to me. It, like again, I think that it's strong in the right shell, so I feel like it's yes. it's, it's kind of niche. I I I need to ask Phil about Bant Lotus, but I, I've seen enough Lotus. I've seen enough of these like <laughs> stupid tokens that Phil keeps making, and they always pop off. And to me, this this goes right in there. Uh, so is is there a Bant Lotus? Like <laughs> someone they got to make a Bant Lotus, <laughs> and then we're cooking. Mm. Uh, Seth, hit us up with a card. Ah, well, it wouldn't be a best card from a set list without me bringing up the Panharmonicon from the set. And this is a good one. Annie joins up. So Annie joins up is a four mana Naya enchantment. Actually, if you're a commander player, the whole joins up cycle is worth looking into. Veraska joins up is also a really good one. Uh, but Annie joins up four mana Naya enchantment. When it enters a battlefield, five damage to a creature, or planeswalker and opponent controls. And then if it triggered ability of a legendary creature you control, 
uh, triggers, it triggers an additional time. So this is kind of like a panharmonicon for Legends. Really, it's like a roaming throne for Legends or a harmonic prodigy because it works with any ability that triggers, not just ETB triggers. And I we've seen roaming throne. The card's like super expensive. It keeps seeing more and more play. It's really become a staple of Commander. It's up to 9% of decks now, even though it costs over $30 and it was just printed last fall because it's showing up in so many archetypes. I think that Annie joins up the only drawback of this card is its color identity. It is three colors, so you can't just jam it in any deck. But if you look at like the most played Naya commanders, let's say, Gishath, powerful triggered ability. Atla Polini, powerful triggered ability. Rin and Theria make a ton of cats and dogs. Uh, Shalai and Halar gets more counters. Voja gets double the ward. Like almost every popular Naya commander is going to work with this. And the same is true of most five color commanders. We got like, Goshen Ties and Jodas and Najilas and Omnas. So I think this card is just almost an auto include in any deck that's in its colors in Commander. There will be exceptions. If your Commander doesn't have any abilities that trigger, then this card isn't going to be as good. Uh, but I think replacement just having... effects don't count, right? Like Jenny Faye. So Jenny, yeah, Jenny Faye is not a triggered ability. It's a it's a replacement right. effect. So it wouldn't work with Jenny Faye. Uh, so that's probably one where you wouldn't have it. But I obviously, if you have more legends in your deck that have abilities, it goes up in power. And that's not really an issue in 2023 because so many cards are 2024 because so many cards are legendary. But even just doubling your commander's power and getting a reasonable removal spell out of it, I think is enough for me to play this in, in basically any deck in its colors. It's really good. I think it's poo-poo. Richard, <laughs> I, I know. Of course here's you the do. Thing, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I agree with you that commanders are so powerful today that like doubling up the trigger is worth it. But in my mind, the hard part is getting your commander to trigger, right? And if you got it to trigger, you're in a very good spot. And like, so this is kind of win more in a weird way, right? Like if you got your commander to trigger... You're golden. So spending resources to double it, I don't think it's worth it. And you should be spending your resources ensuring that your commander triggers. Because like we said, like every card just snowballs out of control. Like, do we need to double that snowball or, or you know, because you're paying four mana for it, right? It's not free. So I I feel that kind of lessens it because the trigger is powerful enough on its own. Mm -hmm. But, 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 remember, you also get a removal spell out of it. Part of the problem with Panharmonicons is they don't really do anything. You're taking a turn off. Five damage to a creature Planeswalker isn't the greatest removal spell of all time, but it does kill a reasonable amount of stuff, right? If you look at popular Isn't this just a flame just... tongue Kavu? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like plain most of the time, like, Monicon, yeah. Like, it, it's, it's, I feel like most of the time it's going to be a flame tongue Kavu, right? <laughs> but I feel like the... the removal helps, right? It's got to. I don't know if I'm paying four mana for that, right? That, that's that's the problem. I Like, at least Flame Tongue Kavu leaves him with a body. I do think that in the right deck, like, again, the right home, like a Legends Matter, like a Sisse deck or something like that, sure, this it, these effects are really good. But there's so many Panharmonicon effects now that I just feel like this is kind of lackluster, and I'd like Richard said, I'd rather protect my commander or something like that. I remember like y'all is... poo pooing <laughs> Roaming Throne too a couple of but sets. But they're all ago, replaceable, though, right? <laughs> like you can you can take Roaming Throne out, put this in, or you can take this out, put Roaming. Like there's so many Panharmonicons, and there's only so much room in your deck that you can play one or the other, and it's like kind of the same if you're even playing them. So like that's Roaming why Throne is better than this. Also, generic. I didn't poo poo it Roaming Throne. I wanted. I, I it like has Roaming more. Throne. <laughs> yeah, okay, it has okay. more. Let it goes well, well me, with rogues. <laughs> let me let me try to sell you Vraska joints up real quick. Maybe I picked the wrong one. So this one is two Golgari <laughs> mana. When it ETPs, you put a death uh, touch counter on everything. And then when a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So it's legendary Toski for two mana, Richard. Do you not like this one either? Or Wait, no, no, that's great? not that's not Toski. It's curiosity almost, right? Like depends how yeah. many legendary creatures you have on the battlefield. Depends if you care about death touch counters. Uh, but it's like, Two mana draw card if you hit once. Like who's but it's like it's like coastal piracy or something. If you get in with five it, legends, but, but you draw you only five have cards. Like one yeah, legendary. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah it, uh, it's unless not you're exactly playing a coastal Sissi deck piracy. Where everything is legendary, it is not coastal piracy, right? It's very yeah. close to curiosity. So it is literally curiosity, <laughs> like right? Because if you have one legendary, that's all you're connecting with, it's all you're drawing with. I I again, there's, unless there's of course, so many legends everyone now in, though. 
Uh, like, okay, in the right shell, again, Sisse, things like that, sure, but if, if I, okay, example, would I just play this in my generic, like, I don't know, my, my, the, the new Gonti deck? No, I don't think I would. Yeah, you don't play creatures, Grim. This isn't a card for you. The, you don't believe in Ga creatures. The Gonti deck <laughs> plays all creatures. What are you talking about? <laughs> Like, like, like uh, here's the thing. If your commander is an attacking commander, right? Meaning that it has the ability to actually connect because it has evasion, it has like crazy triggers and whatever. Like the draw card is probably irrelevant. Think like the the get wrong monster from the set, right? Like if you're hitting, like who cares about this, right? Like you're getting the trigger, you're going nuts. Or you have like a value commander, like a Lawnmower Elk commander. You're not hitting anyone with that, right? So this doesn't really help you. I guess you could tap it with Death Touch and, like, hope someone doesn't block, but your uh -huh. commander's probably trying to use its ability rather than attacking. So the payoff is, like, not there. I, I don't think it... I, I think this is crazy in legendary decks, right? So if all your creatures are legendary, you're playing Sisse or whatever, uh, Joda, like, that kind of stuff, like, this is crazy. But otherwise, it's like, eh. <laughs> so so you don't think you just incidentally have enough legends for it to be good, unless you're actually a legendary theme deck. Like there's, we're not to the point yet. We're just like enough of the random creatures you play are legends to make it worthwhile. Oh, I, guess I, can, I guess I can. I guess I can see your that. Your stupid sand scout can get in there and draw a card. The sand warrior gets in and draws a card. Like not coastal like your piracy. Any any die, of those right? thoughts, Biden, things like yeah. that. Don't care if it's legendary, and I think that's just better. But this is two mana. It's half the price. That is and that is nice. Half the price, touch. but you will draw like a fraction of the card. I mean, I play Curiosity sometimes. Like I feel this is it, right? Like yeah. it's early in the game. You have a one drop, like a Ragavan uh. or something, right? You slap this down. You're like, oh, no one's ready for me, right? Draw cards, <laughs> Curiosity. Get like two or three cards of value before it gets removed, and then call it a day. Like I can see that. You do get the Death Touch, which isn't like nothing, right? It, it it's a, incentivizes it's a bonus, people yeah. to let it through, but chances are they're blocking with their loyal warhound or something like they're not they're not going to care at that point of the game right so but richard no one will ever attack you if you put a death touch counter on your spirited companion and your pilgrim's eye and whatnot you'll be good who's going to attack into that <laughs> this will keep true. you alive forever <laughs> that is true <laughs> that is actually true uh crim hit us with the next card uh so my next card is another modal card or another spree card as you probably figured out by now uh, it's final showdown, one mana, uh, like uh, base cost, but then you have to at least pay plus one to get all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn, plus another one, choose a creature you control against indestructible until end of turn, plus five, destroy all creatures. This is at instant speed. So I think closer, we are getting closer and closer to actually just the nine meta wrath and this card its versatility has just made it so it's going to be that much easier to go nine mana. I mean, nine, nine cost wrath or no, nine wraths total, <laughs> nine wraths total. I, I, I felt, I just love this. It's nothing crazy. It's just very, very versatile and good at a protecting your stuff or kind of doing a better, a, a, a cute dress down imp uh, like impression. And then of course I love my sweepers. I love instant speed. So this just feels really, really strong in Commander. This card busted. It's like Blaze Cyclonic Rift. I think it's even better than that. It's so, it's so good. So you could, so the upside is you can cast it like Cyclonic Rift and the upkeep before your turn. Yes, you're going to blow up your stuff if you have stuff, which is different than Cyclonic Rift, but you still get around the issue of your opponent's getting to rebuild first. If you tap out for a Wrath during your turn and it's like six mana, your opponents each get to like rebuild their board before you get to uh, deploy anything. With this, you can cast it on the end step and then you're the first one who gets to use your mana to like set up your board again. So I really like it for that reason. I think I rank it just behind Farewell and Austere Command. So it might be White Wrath number three for me. Yeah. I'm not okay. I'm gonna play this for science, but I think this kind of kind of sucks. Like, do you play Vanquish the Horde? I never play Vanquish the Horde. Vanquish the Horde is like basically black. This is not the same. White, but it's, it's like two mana wrath creatures. The problem is it's only wrath creatures. This gets around indestructible, right? But so does like a card like Sunfall. Uh, but like we don't play Sunfall. Like like I never even Sunfall's not instant. I never consider it, right? But, like, I don't know. Like, if this was split second, I'm on board. Uh, if, if this was phase everything back in, I'm on board. But this is just, like, you can get around indestructible creatures. 
And if you're if you're saving one of your creatures, so you're like a Voltroni deck or something, there's like better wraths, right? Like divine reckoning, things like that with like flashback and stuff. But you're not trying at to save. instant speed. Not at instant <laughs> but speed. But you're just gonna like, hold yeah. up the mana there and just like like what does the instant speed get you exactly? You hope someone mm. taps down so their Teferi's protection is offline, and then you like get them with the final showdown. But who's gonna yeah. do that when yeah, white or deck you is wait holding until six they mana. phase in. Or you wait till they phase in and then you blow it up then. What if what you if you guys think like of it like a, I didn't think of it like a fog. Before. Think of it's it like a fog, Richard. It's like a fog, but the creatures die too. It's a little expensive fog, but it's, it's too expensive. Like a fog. That's like Ink Shield or like I mean, I, I do play route from time to time, but again, it's always like very like if I'm a draw go deck, okay, yes. <laughs> right? Like this this actually makes some kind of sense. But I don't know. It's just destroy all creatures. Like, that's the biggest problem. It doesn't kill that's so artifacts, good. enchantments, that's so good. all that other nonsense. I think, I think you can get some value out of the other modes. I was actually really surprised in our last Commander Clash, uh, or one of our recent ones, you cast a Dress Down, and it was really instrumental in swinging the game for two mana. Just having creatures lose abilities for a turn Ooh. was actually really, really huge. So this is like a Dress Down that you also get the upside of like, in the late game, I can also cast it for a bunch of mana in Wrath. I'm sold. So I think... <laughs> hey, there we go. So, so I never, <laughs> I, I, I never, there. I never thought of it as just two mana dress down. Like to me, I yeah. always chain that one with the five to make it like a, you know, like a rat that gets around indestructible or something. But you could use it as two mana dress down, or two mana save and, a creature. I mean, if it, you it need could be to, like a bad three mana, spell. right? You could three see mana could see save a two creature mana dress and down dress is down enough to save you. Two mana dress down but is enough to save you a lot of the times. So yeah. that, that is the true two mana fog. So I There's like the that. fog mode. And then I, you have I the don't upside like six if you have a ton of mana. mana. <laughs> you, you play it for the, the two mana mode. And then you get the upside that maybe you got a lot of mana in the late game and you get to wrath. So yeah. plus, I mean, the, the ice ground versatility is mm. all there. Mm. Versatility is all there. All right. All right. So you good. got me back. You got me back with the dress down. There. You got me back with the dress down. <laughs> yes. We did. I it. like it. <laughs> I like it. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. It's not dress down. It's not dress down. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. so close. So here's the thing. Here's dress down. So dress down is humility for a turn, right? You flash it in in response. They play their crap. It's all humility. This does not do that. You flash it in, all their stuff ETBs in, and then you get totally wrecked. It's not dress down. Back <clears> to <throat> the garbage bin. <laughs> Back to the garbage bin. <laughs> It is worse than dress down. That is true. It is worse because it doesn't apply. Dress down applies to all the future creatures too. Right. So this turn, only applies right? to yeah. what's on and the that, battlefield. That's the important yeah. thing because you need to do it in response to the crater hoof. Like the crater hoof comes down, you dead. Like this final showdown. Oh wait, you no, actually, you you're six. not. You're not dead because you can just blow up. Yeah, everything. if you have six mana <laughs> conveniently for the crater I hoof mean, turn, right? I, I, I mean, yeah, like. I don't know, man. I think you're 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 totally overlooking its versatility. Very plain, very simple, nothing crazy, but just very efficient. Yeah, we talked about I'm this with last you, podcast like too, right? This 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 combos with Sunforger. If you're a Sunforger believer, Sunforger, so you can yeah. Sunforger this out. Um, I don't know what else it combos with. Oh, did, wait, you do have a combo with Isochron Scepter? Isochron Scepter is the other big one. Yeah, you can put it under a scepter, and you still have to pay the five extra each time, but you can just Wrath every turn off a scepter. It's the, it's the, it's off the, the 36 scepter. Wrath meta set. <laughs> Yo, that sounds great. It sounds not, so not blowing up cool. artifacts is an upside. You can keep it on the scepter forever. <laughs> Synergy. Uh, okay. Uh, this is probably actually my favorite card of the set. Well, no, the land was no, I lied. This is my this is my favorite colored card. No, 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 the ramp one too. This is my favorite black card in the set. It's <laughs> <There sexual we go. laughs> avarice, single black sorcery with spree. Uh, two generic. Search your library for a card. Shuffle. Put it on top. Black black. Target player draws three cards and loses three life. So mm. triple black. Draw three. Lose three life. Uh, three mana ghetto sorcery speed vampire tutor where it goes on top. But if you spree it together, you can tutor it on top, draw it with the spree, and then go to town. But three mana draw three triple black uh, is where it's at. Painful truth, one of the, my favorite cards of all time. I'm hurt every single time I play a black deck, but it doesn't have three colors, so I'm like I can't, 
I can't do it. I might actually start playing it because there's enough like Yamamayas running around that maybe we could just do it. <laughs> maybe we could just do it in a two color deck. But <laughs> Insatiable Avarice, I think, uh, top tier. Three mana draw three, premium. Secret Rendezvous, premium cards, right? So I, I'm all for this. That's- it's just a new mono black staple, right? I mean, the only downside is it is triple black for the card draw. So if you're getting to like five color, you know, even three color decks might be hard to cast on turn three sometimes. But otherwise, like if you have the mana to cast this, why wouldn't you play this? And then it's five mana tutor and draw, which is yeah. also pretty fine. I don't think the one mode that's pretty bad is like the the three mana vampire tutor mode. <laughs> Try to avoid that one probably by itself is not very good, but... I don't know. You can draw w- incidentally usually in your decks. It's not that bad. I would not discredit that. I mean, like, first off, like, even if it's a vampiric tutor, you are able, the flexibility of these free cards of just, I don't know, even if it's nothing crazy and it seems like an overcosted vamp tutor, it's, it's still just the options there. I love that. And just like every, every magic card, if it's modal and if it has flexibility, it's always worth looking at. Also worth mentioning, and this isn't going to be the primary mode, but you can target someone else with that last mode. The hidden which mode. is kind of relevant with Bowmasters and Shieldrids. It can actually add yeah. up to a lot of damage that might be able to kill someone if you have some of those like Punishers for draws out there when you cast it. God, nine damage off the top right there. If they have like Shieldrid, oh, that's nice. Um, Trouble in pairs, burn them for three, draw a card back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Seth, hit us with a card. Who I need your all's opinion on this one because uh, this is a card I've been back and forth on, and that card is Lava Spur Boot. So I saw, I think it was Card Market posted something about how this is their literal best-selling card from the set so far. So people are buying it, apparently. It's one mana. It's an equipment. It's one to equip, and it says equip creature gets plus one plus zero, has haste and ward one. So obviously... It compares to Lightning Grieve, Swift Foot Boots, and if you're trying to protect your creatures, it's not as good as those, right? It's Ward 1 versus Literal Shroud, Literal Hexproof, so as protection, it's not as strong. The upside of this card is it's only one mana to cast, which is super relevant with Urza Saga in specific. So this is can be part of your Urza Saga package, where when you get to that last lore counter, you sack your Urza Saga, you get this, you slam it on a creature for one mana, smash in for a bunch of damage. So is this card good enough? I'm not arguing it's going to replace boots and it's not going to replace lightning greaves it's not in that tier but is this good enough to be part of urza saga packages especially in decks that are like voltron beat down decks that can take advantage of the the haste mode because it is pretty efficient right one mana to cast one to equip seth let me ask you something like i you you from experience playing with you do you ever pay the one seth <laughs> Uh, I mean, for Ward, I do occasionally, but uh, no, occasionally, not in general. Right? <laughs> uh, what, what is, what scares the internet more than anything? The word Ward. So, uh, true. like, that, this tells me that this card, I think this card's pretty good. It's also insanely cheap, like you had mentioned, right? The ability to equip and cast and equip for two, which is the cost of Swiftfoot for Lightning Greaves. I think the haste is often nice enough. Ward one has proven to be more than an, like enough to just slightly hinder somebody, right? From actually targeting your commander. So I like this. I, I, it, and randomly it even gives a stat buff. So why not? I like this card. I, I, I think this is decent. I don't, again, it's not full on hexproof or, or whatever. It's not going to replace that. But I think this is still a very nice card. Guy yeah, smoking. So, uh, so I, actually, I actually gave this a very long thought because I, I recently played Obeka, which is uh, a mm-hmm. commander from the set, which, uh, you know, when you hit someone, you take extra upkeeps. So being able to haste her in is very important. The plus one damage. It's also very important because that means an additional upkeep step, right? Yeah. And then the the protection is, is just gravy on top. I cut it from my deck with the Urza Saga package, right? Because remember, Urza Saga goes down a land, right? You're losing a land drop. And if all you're getting is like a Lava Spur Boots, it better do something crazy, right? Like if you're getting a Soul Ring, you're like, well, I went up mana, right? But if you're getting Lava Spur Boots, you're like, was that worth playing the Urza's saga and remember like some percentage of time you're drawing this lava spur boots into your hand right it's not just for free in your deck forever i can't even conclude it's not eh. worth it the, the ward is not strong enough right though if this was hexproof haste 
we're talking. If it was like if Ward, this were a hexproof haste, this would be busted. If it was oh, Ward, was... like I don't know, four Ward sack a creature, Ward pay ten life or something, we might be talking. But the Ward one is so weak. I don't want to go down to land for that. Richard, like, Richard, that, calm down. You said something? Ward too many times. The internet's cr- scared right now. Okay? I mean, <laughs> I mean, Ward. I I don't feel <laughs> what. So oh, he said it again. <laughs> So I don't Boy think you play this to be your primary, your primary Urza Saga target, right? You're not like playing Urza Saga with your goal being I'm gonna get lava spur boots, but it seems good enough to have floating in your deck, hopefully, right? Because there's gonna be situations where you're like, eh, I already got the man, I don't need my soul ring or whatever. Like, actually, right now, lava spur boots is gonna pop off because I got this big creature in my hand and I can get an attack with it right away or whatever. So I feel like I think it's good enough to play as like one of your targets, not the one you're gonna get most of the time, but as one of your backup situational targets. I kind of let, like... let, let me ask you this, Seth. Would you play it even without Urza Saga? See, once there's no Urza Saga, the problem I run into is I'm like, why wouldn't I just play Greaves or Swiftfoot Boots? Why, why wouldn't let's, I just take let's... one more mana to get full protection? So well, I think that's that's what I run into is like, will I play all three of them? Probably not. Yeah, I don't even play both Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots in every deck. Like, So it's hard for me to imagine playing the third one or replacing either of those with it, unless I have a synergy like Saga or Trinket Mage or like something to take advantage of that uh, it being one mana. I mean, yeah, like, uh, I, I, I think I would enjoy this. I, I'm not going to say this is for every deck, because like you said, why not pay one more mana and just have, like, Greaves for a full protection? But there are some decks where I think just having an additional pair of shoes is nice, right? Because one thing that's yeah. happened that, that will always happen is people will blow up your shoes. I don't play Saga, personally, and I would still play this for fun. I think it's a, a good, like, third... Like, it, you're right, it is number three, but in some decks, I do want shoes number three. Like, specifically, I, I do want the haste uh, just that much. And it goes up in value if you have equipment stuff, right? If you're pure yeah. steel paladin, sraming, like, those synergies for playing equipment, it is just a one-mana equipment that's gonna, like, trigger all your things, which is is relevant in some decks. You guys play, like, Expedite? I think that's the card. It's, like, single red, target creature gets haste draw card. It's like free. It cycles itself. It's one mana. You're like, oh, well, you know, sometimes my commander might need haste. This will be super handy. It like costs nothing. It kind of cycles. Like, do you just chuck that in your deck? Like, even the if same. it's somehow that's not the same. That's no, but not even the if same. it's somehow like neutral, like, is it worth a deck slot? <laughs> like, that, that's still a card that's... you need to cut to put in your deck, right? That's the problem, right? The opportunity cost. So no, I I mean, in maybe a certain Spellslinger deck or Zada or something, but in general, yeah. no, I'm not just going to play in a generic deck. Yeah, because of the opportunity cost. And I, that's kind of what you run into. We have so many powerful cards. Even our just list from today, we have like 40 cards or something that we we have had in our conversation as possible best cards from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It keeps getting harder and harder, right, to like get to 100 cards because there's just so many good cards these days. So the opportunity cost is is the issue. And that's that's kind of what I run into like play it for fun maybe it's a budget option because greaves is actually still kind of like a few dollars uh but i still like it with there's a saga all right crib hit us with a card all right so this one might be like yeah it's definitely one of those build around cards but i think there's a lot of big role players that have come in from this set uh this set is very powerful and one of those role players i think is satoru the infiltrator two mana blue and black uh human ninja rogue menace whenever satoru infiltrator and or one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them draw a card it does not say this only triggers once per turn this is something that is huge for like uh, like ninja decks. There's lots of blink decks. Uh, you could play it in an Esper blink deck. There's whatever deck that can abuse that this ability. I think this card is very good. Um, ninjutsu, this is just absolutely nuts. You are gonna run wild, making mo- like so many cards. You will be sitting on a mountain of cards. Uh, it, again, this is. A huge role player. It's in a specific deck, but it's so good in that deck. So what triggers this? So ninjutsu, blink, yep. blink, reanimation. Yep. Yeah. Like literal, like free spells. If you played a mem knight. Yep. Or if you played <laughs> yep. like a thought monitor or something, right? Like that. That would do it as well. Evoke elementals. Evoke um, elementals. Yep. 
Is those this, are the big this ones, I think. Eggs? Do we have enough Memnites? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> is it Jabir Ace In... time? Is, is this what we're, where we're at? I've, I've like, seen cloud, some rooms cloud... for it for 60 card <laughs> format. Cloud trio, seems... eggs, oh, whatever, go maybe? off. <laughs> if, like, like so... you could just keep bouncing like your Ornithopter back or something <laughs> like that. You just draw your whole yeah. deck. Yeah. Kabolds. Yeah, just Kabolds yeah. your way into Kabolds. victory. Yeah. Uh, someone said. It's a non-token creature, but yeah, I think, I think this is very good. I think this card is absolutely nuts. Someone said this mana. is up the beanstalk. <laughs> they were talking more about modern, but now I kind of can't unsee like the amount of things that trigger it when you actually get into like how many different things will draw you a card with this. I think the other reason I'm excited about in commander is ninjas are super cool, but they have one big problem, which is their primary commander is incredibly busted arch enemy Eureka. Like it is just so over the top. So if you want to play a ninja deck, that's good, but not like immediately going to make you the arch enemy at the table. I think that's like where where this is going to show up. This fills that role really nicely. It's still really powerful. It generates card advantage, but it's also not like, oh, my God, you're just going to Emrakul and like flip it and kill the table. We got to get rid of you like power level. So I really like that, too. So first off, everyone, if you, for those that don't know what ninjutsu is, that is an actual just activated ability. You're not you're you're, you're, you're not casting it. Right. You're just pay, activating an ability. So that's why right. this would trigger. Uh, but on top of that, I think that, yes, Eureka, obviously the poster of broken things you can do just in general, regardless of ninjas or not. I, I don't even consider Eureka a ninja commander anymore. Like, right, that that is that's just it, she's not. She's just so much better than just ninjutsu. Um, yeah. So I, I actually think the next drop off is then Umezawa, Satoru Umezawa from Neon Dynasty. That one, people will probably, like, that's honestly a ninja deck, right? And that one's also pretty busted, and people are afraid of getting hit by Blightsteel. So, I actually currently recommend playing Satoru, uh, uh, Goro Goro and Satoru. That is an actual very good ninja deck that I am, I cannot wait to put this in. I think this card will be, will probably draw the ire of the table more than Satoru. Because once this comes out, I think people will start to realize, again, this is a very cheap commander that will also just, you kind of just can keep going. And you just keep drawing cards. And if and if, if the table sees you drawing cards, like tons of them, it doesn't matter if you drew 100 lands, they're going to try to kill you. I, I, I think this is this is a scary a scarier commander than you think it is for think, for for ninjas. So if, if you just think about modern for a second, where people are like, oh, I should play Lavinia or Void Mirror. There's a lot of mechanics that involve paying zero mana for your stuff. Like Cascade was the other one we didn't talk about. Oh yeah. Uh, so there there's a lot of stuff you could do. So like ninjas and stuff makes sense, or like rogues. But I'm I am curious about the Cloudstone Curio deck or something, or like just like a Cascade deck that's using this. Like, I feel there's a lot of room for it because, like, sus wait, Suspend you cast. Suspend doesn't work. Foretell doesn't Suspend work. Suspend is well, cast, you, yeah. yeah. yeah you, so, but, but there's a lot of mechanics it? that we don't actually pay our Hold mana on. in 2024. But do you, how much do you pay, pay the mana? Does mm -hmm. I guess no, with Suspend, it's zero. No, you, you mana, wouldn't. It's so zero. You would suspend actually, a creature, yeah. it would work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's zero. Yeah. So this includes plot. Right, like you have plot also coming into the format. I think that's you why plot creatures, it, yeah, though? to be a plot. Yeah, you can plot creatures. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's plot creatures. The uh, yeah, like there's 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 uh, a few plot creatures. Yeah, th so th this looks suspiciously narrow, but it turns out it's pretty broad. <laughs> <And> there's actually <laughs> a lot of things in it. Yeah, and it's uh, a two three menacer. It comes down super early. I think it's actually yeah. a really good card. All right. Uh, next card. Great. Train heist. This one, this one's from Tomer. Tomer had it on his list. He couldn't make it, but I like this card too. Uh, single red, instant, spree, three mana, untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. Uh, plus two creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain first strike until end of turn. And then a single red, choose target opponent whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player this turn. Create a tapped treasure token mm. Mm. this is this red guy. fog seth this is red oh god fog. wait red fog wait how's our red fog <laughs> you, everything you four is mana fog. untap your team and block <laughs> no one will see it coming <laughs> you, can even, you can even give your team first strike if that helps i uh, guess that's true uh, it, it's an extra combat step is an extra combat spell <laughs> 
that doubles as like utility ramp that's delayed because the treasure is coming tapped or can be used as like a pseudo fog where you untap your team, get enough chumps in just to not die and then take your turn. <laughs> I, I think like the card is very good. That. <laughs> I think this card is very good. I uh, but then because you said it's fog, it slightly <laughs> tarnishes the card a little bit. But but you know what? Sure, you're right. It can instant speed allow you to block. But this card is very good. Again, another modal card. These modal cards are going to probably be pretty big in Commander moving forward. I think a I mean, lot of these will be very good. I think they're going to be very good. Yeah, in, in Commander and in other formats, just like the flexibility is so huge. If you think about it, this one's like pretty much on rate too, right? Like what's the cheapest way to just take an additional combat? I'm thinking Relentless it's like four mana, right? Relentless as all is like yeah. four mana. So you're already paying like the going rate for an extra combat effect. And then you get all this extra upside where like you can pump your team if you need to. First strike is actually kind of relevant in combat. And then I'm very intrigued by the just like two mana. If I got a bunch of creatures, I'm some go wide deck token deck, make a ton of treasure tokens. Yeah, they're tapped so I can't use them right away, but it still seems like it can lead to some really explosive ramp. Like we've seen with Ragavan, like just the treasures that your creatures make when they deal combat damage really speeds up your deck and can lead to some really explosive of turns so i think this card's just like good can you just play this generically richard like do you need to be like an extra combat step deck or something or you're just like i got a bunch of creatures and i'm in red so let's great train heist it generic is hard because red is also the spell slinger <laughs> color mm, so a lot right. of times you might just be storming but any any deck that requires combat which is the other half of the decks like you, you don't need to combo like you know combo kill but like any deck that requires combats i think it's really good and you guys are underestimating the untap your creature's block. So the reason I know this is because in birds, the pump spell, there's a two-mana instant rally of wings. It gives all your flyers, I think, plus two, plus two, but it untaps them. And the amount of times where someone tries to kill you or attack you and you just untap your team and, like, destroy them uh, is funny. And this lets you do that with the first strike. Like, you can actually, oh, like, just, like, totally oh, yeah. wreck someone Ooh. with the first strike. Uh, so... The fact that it's an on-rate extra combat, the only special thing is it's instant. You have to cast it during a combat. I can foresee a lot of people attacking, go to second main, cast this. And you're like, okay, that did nothing. That was a turnabout or something, yep. right? Uh, but I I think this is it. We, we, we need a, a tier list ranking of all the extra turn, uh, extra combat spells. Because we have a lot of them. Mm. And they're all very slightly different at different mana values and different combo potential. So which that, one makes Richard the cut? I, I know what your number one would be. It's the one from Murders at Karlov Manor. The the four mana Boros one that fogs and then allows you to untap or and then goad the entire team. There's another combat and the whole oh, team that no, no, four <laughs> mana fog is rough though. I mean, this no, is, no, this no, but but you're it's also a kill condition, right? It you, is. You go to that's somebody else. We're trying to add conditions onto his fog, right? I, I this is just oh, a solid that, extra that's the combat. Reach. That's and, where we're and reaching. it has okay. a fog backup. <laughs> right <laughs> that's where the line is drawn whoa crim you're being ridiculous <laughs> okay i hate all right. ink shield i hate ink shield i'm an ink uh, shield. me too because, because it ends the game on top of the no 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 no, no. Ink shield, no, no. Great. it's, it's ink a shield con great. it's not a fog it's like you're, oh, you're setting it up everyone God. knows it's coming and see if they can avoid <laughs> it or not right like it's very no, they obvious don't nobody ever plays around it are you kidding me oh, and I if you're seven if you're, cards in hand pass with five mana up no, don't worry guys <laughs> dude oh, okay all right all right sure <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we should do the tier list sometime, but this might be the best extra combat effect on this bell. Like, I think there's a pretty good argument that when we do finally tier list them, that this might be number one. <laughs> because of the fog vote. Okay, Seth, go. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got I, so I moved a little bit away of playing endless blink value decks. I don't play them as much as I used to. That used to be my go to play style when I first started playing Commander. But uh, this card has got the blink juices flowing, and I might have to go back to my old ways for another round, which is three mana, uh, including a white mana, in double X. And it says, exile any number of creatures you control, then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Repeat this process X more times. So, 
This looks a little bit like Eerie Interlude, uh, Ghost Away, these uh, like three mana blink your entire team effects. The downside of this card is it's sorcery speed. So what this is not going to do is blink out your team in response to like a wrath or something. It's not going to fizzle a removal spell. What this card does actually say is trigger all your ETB stuff X times. And that by itself is an absurd effect in a Panharmonicon deck, in some sort of ETB trigger deck, in some sort of blink deck. If you think about what this is, the only thing we've seen that's kind of close to this is Lizelle's Acrobatics, which is four mana. And if you high roll, it'll blink twice. Uh, but you need to roll like a 11 plus, I think, or a 10 plus, something like that. This card has the potential in a late game. You can trigger all your ETBs three times, four times, five times. And that is pretty realistic. Imagine a board full of Muldrip and spirited companions you will draw so many cards there's things that drain on etb deal damage on etb this is just going to trigger all that stuff it most likely wins the game in the late game when you're casting this for like 12 mana or something you probably just win the game on the spot with etb value so in any sort of blink deck panharmonicon deck this card is going to be so incredible it's just like it, it's ridiculous i can't even believe they made this card it's like so wild yeah, I, th I think this card is pretty sweet in those kind of decks, right? Uh, Cloud Blazers, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a little sad, though, mm. that, uh, I don't know, I mean, is, is this, why is everything, I, uh, like, like now we're doubling the doubling, right? We're doubling the doubling. <laughs> we, we've decided we're starting to double the double. Like, like mm. doubling is not in what it once was, right? I feel like <laughs> now I just assume everything is doubled. But now, <laughs> we have lots of cards to triple on them. We, we don't tripling is the new doubling. We don't have a yeah, quad have... yet. Just like quad base. Th but this is it, right? This, this is, is it. Kind of quad. This, X this is <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's essentially quad base. <laughs> <laughs> your your I mean, mole drifters. Th this thing pretty much wins you the game. Uh, it ensures so. There, there's Stonehorn Dignitary, which uh, when it ETBs, the, an opponent skips their next combat. So with this, you can make the whole table skip their combat. So no one's killing you through combat. They're going to have to win some with some other means. Uh, Blink is just... Like, if you have a jank theme and you need to win, <laughs> you either change it to Enchantress, change it to, you know, add the Enchantress <laughs> package, add the Blink package, or add True. the artifacts package. And True. like, here you go, right? Blink is up there with one of those, like, if you don't die in the first turn four, uh, first four turns of the game, you you are set up to draw like your whole deck. Like your biggest risk is like running out of time or decking yourself. Uh, so, it's so powerful, it's, so powerful. It's also kind of insane that they don't have this card exile itself. This reads like the kind of card that should exile itself. Very easy to go infinite with like Peregrine Drake and Archaeomancer, Peregrine Drake Eternal Witness, like some way a Dockside Extortionist to make mana and Eternal Witness, like anything that makes enough mana to cast it again and something that gets it back from your graveyard, you just b blink your way infinite, like, like literally infinitely for as long as you want to do it. So I'm surprised it doesn't exile in resolution. I mean, like, you know, the... I feel like any Blink player probably absolutely loves Michael Jordan, right? They live by the quote, I've never lost a game, I just ran out of time. And, and, and this is, that, along with control players, so like, <laughs> that's a good ethos to live by, I guess. All right, Krim, take us home with your last card. Well, it's not going to be fun, it's not going to be pretty, but it is going to make it so that we can keep everything in check. Just like Seth had mentioned, there's lots of things that are blinking, drawing cards now, meaning multiple spells are getting played. So I forgot I wanted to mention High Noon. High Noon is just a two-mana enchantment, one, uh, one and a white. And uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just a two-mana enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn and then pay four and a red, sack it. Deal five damage to any target. So it's not a stacks piece. It's it's a roast. It's a removal spell. It's a removal spell. It's a removal. Spell. Uh, it's a far, Richard, because because it's if your fun. opponent, it's, it's, it, I mean, how what more needs to be said, right? There's so many things. Just there's just too much. Sometimes you sit there. One player, you, you're tired of the player taking 42 minutes taking their turn. So here's how you you solve that problem. You choose one. And now, and then you're done. I choose one, and then you're done, and then we pass. This is two mana lose the game. This is two yeah, mana. Yeah. What throw what? the game immediately? Like make yourself arch enemy. 
you can't, you know, you, you can't even cast enough spells to stay alive because you're restricted to one spell. Everyone turn. else just casts one spell and everyone will be, until yeah, you die. Yeah, will be super it's, agitated. Yo, and they what got are you three talking spells about? Removal. Your one spell. It's removal. It's removal. I kill one of the things that hit me, so at least I get a turn cycle. I, I will say I think Krim is right. Except he's not talking about the right format. I think this card is absolutely horrible in the kind of commander we play in Commander Clash. But I think this card is probably a good, like, CDH kind of card, isn't it? Like, you play more CDH than me, Richard. Is this not a good enough stacks piece for, for like, Winota stacks or those style? No. Those style you, 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 you can cycle through your hand at instant speed, so it, it doesn't stop the can tripping. And then they just end of turn bounce this and then kill you. So this, So it is effective, but it's, like, as effective as any other... Lock it's piece? actually less effective because the lock pieces that you can get, like let's just say, like off a of Winota or something like that, that you that, like you can tutor him off of many creature tutors, which is probably better than than like this being attached to an enchantment. However, I think I think this is nice because also it's it's good and casual. You could just like it, it's a removal spell. It's a good removal spell. It's not a. It's, it's, it's a good <laughs> removal. Seven mana. It's not even it's, roast. It's seven mana. Five damage. Yeah. Get what you know. What it ensures that I get the get the time to get to five mana. What, to then what is get the cheapest? The, what is the cheapest like rule? Of, so rule of law. This is three mana. Right. Is this like this is the canonus is like what you could cast. One non two mana spell? Ar artifact. yep, artifacts but are excluded. There's deafening silence, forever. which is one mana, but only for non creature spells. Uh, but you so get it taxes to use this. future non creatures. You keep this around for as long as you want it to be there, and it's a removal I, spell. And then you just I mean, five mana to sack it and end your turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At the end of at the end of your opponent's turn. Yeah, and it's any target. So I can also it's a win condition, Richard. Look at that. You think I mean, you, it like, does deal five to someone's dome. It does. It doesn't yeah. actually hurt. <laughs> yeah, it hurts, and it also like allows you to live long mm. enough to do your your slow, dirtily I, stuff. I think it does the opposite of what you're thinking. Like, if you slam this, I think you live a shorter amount of time because everyone's gonna try to kill you they, when they probably tries weren't to trying kill to me kill me anyway. Oh yeah, okay. So like, life. I don't yeah, understand. If it, like, I, if I, you're I living blink. the crim life, that's kind of true. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't understand what you mean. People don't do that all the time. Like, so. Like, I wouldn't even play this if it was non-symmetrical. Like if it's like each other, play, like each opponent can only cast one spell. Because again, say you can cast multiple spells. Well, guess what? Three combats, three spells, three people's worth of mana are coming for you anyway. So even if you are unhindered three yourself, it doesn't matter. From a deck that played one thing a time, and one thing at That's a time. That's enough. Because you're gonna yeah, like play then, one thing thing, but even if you did it, you're, you're you're restricted by mana, right? Like everyone has the, the combined, the table has three times the mana as you, so this is just like die and die fa guaranteed to upset everyone. Die Doesn't slowly. matter what they're yeah. doing. Oh, it will upset everyone, <laughs> but everyone's it, already upset. It's it's 2024. No one plays Magic happy. Everyone's just always upset. <laughs> so you know what? Everybody is Bruce Banner. You know what? That's my secret cap. I'm always angry. <laughs> If this was not symmetrical, it would be so busted. That, was, that card, I would, would definitely you play, play it. it. Oh, no. Yeah. If you can do everything and your opponents can do one thing, I think you can defend yourself, even if your arch enemy maybe there. If you, like, I think you seven, really slow slap people down, down and then try to win the game from there. But like, mm, if you play okay. early, you definitely dead. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, on turn two, we'll it see. might still be too risky. But... We'll see. Let's you know, Crim's going to play it with his fairy. Roiling Vortex. Yeah, and Roiling all, Vortex. All his stacks be... piece. Crim's really a stacks player at it's heart. It's not stacks. Yeah. It's not stacks. I'm just punishing free spells. And then on top of that, I'm punishing excessive draw. And then now. <laughs> what's, high, what's High Noon punishing? Uh, just people that ha draw an excessive amount and then they take 45 minutes to play through their turn. <laughs> you, you know you know what would be good? Descent into Avernus and High. Like, like, Yo, you're basically I stacks, love right? descending into Avernus. You put down the it's big not burn. Stacks. You it's give not them, <laughs> you give them the burn. mana, but the high noon is down, so they can't fully utilize it. And then you you the, try to burn them out as this is going I, on. I will admit, I will say that descend into Avernus is not a burn spell. Is it is not a stacks piece? It is a burn spell along with Roiling Vortex. This is not. I I will say that calling this a burn spell is 
a slight reach. I will admit this is closer to are you, a Are you stack trying piece. to say this is not a stacks piece? <laughs> it's a burn spell. It's a burn spell. <laughs> oh, crap. Um, it's also a piece it's of a, cardboard. It's a piece it, of burn. Yeah. Uh, it it's, a, it's a piece of, of Wizards of the art. Coast. It is, yes. <laughs> it is one of it is a burn spell. Uh, that's what I see it as. So I don't know what you're talking about. All and right. it also goads. It also goads every creature. At you. <laughs> I do like the flavor, though. You get, you get, you get one shot. Everyone gets one shot. One shot. <laughs> Mom spaghetti. Yep. I, I, I mean, I actually like it. Like everyone gets one turn, and if the game doesn't end, the game ends in a draw. High noon. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, Richard. Oh, people Richard. would get so salty. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I found Splinter Twin. Before we go, I found Splinter Twin. This and Final Showdown. It's a What's Splinter Twin combo because you get to board wipe at instant speed, which you poo-pooed on the whole time. <laughs> so so that that whole thing, oh, well, you won't have the resources. Well, well you're definitely going to need that board wipe because everyone tries to murder you. <laughs> so, That's yeah. Splinter Twin, dude. With that, I found I found 2024 Splinter I, I mean, all the spree cards give you multiple effects on one card, which gets right yeah. under the high noon. So we, we did it. We found That's the synergy. So spree at high noon. You, no, it's Splinter Twin. It's combo. We comboed. <laughs> We've comboed. All right, let us know what cards you're excited about. There are so many good cards. We have such a giant list of cards. Uh, let us know what your favorite new cards are. Uh, what do you think about the Desert Land package? Are we running that? What do you think about the Urza Saga package uh, with Lava Spur Boots? Are you going to run that one? Let us know in the comments, and then we'll see you all back here next week.